Well, good morning, one and all. It's lovely to see you all here today, and we've got a slightly different crowd to normal. We've got some new friends, we've got some old friends joining us for today, and we've got uh, uh, Janice. Janice, yes, that's the name, yes, good, um, who's on, been on placement with Mark Previtt for the last six weeks, and this is her final session with us today, so she's decided to come and see what we're doing in this parish. So you, you're all most welcome. If I haven't met you before, uh, I'd love to catch up for you a bit at the end of the service, um, or if we haven't seen you in a while, and there's not a ginormous queue of people, but we'll see. So it's lovely to see you all today. A couple of notices before we go any further. First of all, uh, a reminder that we have our prayer meeting at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. That's 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, and that is in the church hall. Um, everyone is welcome to come. You can come and pray with us. You can come and just sit there quietly and just let others pray while you, uh, you join us well, quietly. You can do that. Um, and following that, there is the time of fellowship together. It's just an opportunity for us to come and be together, to, to share our lives together, to play a game or two if that's what you want to do. So if, that's, if you'd like to come along to that, please do. That's at 11 o'clock in the church hall. And one final thing to announce, I think. Um, so I've been at a wedding for the last few days. Uh, a friend of mine got married. He's a fantastic guy, uh, a beard down to there. Um, <laughs> he's the most intelligent guy I've ever met. Anyway, really happy he got married and getting lost in my thinking then. But um, he had a Kaylee for his wedding, a barn dance. Um, I, I would say the Welsh name, but I keep being told off for my pronunciation of the Welsh name. Tumpa? Tumpa? Tumpath. Path. No matter how many times I try, I get it wrong. So <laughs> I'm calling it a barn dance. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, but we're having that in October for the ministry area. And it doesn't matter if you don't dance. You can just come and be together and watch other people dance, have a laugh, and just enjoy the fun ambience of the day. It's going to be held here in this church. Um, so this, that's going to be on a Saturday night in October. The date is in your notice sheet. I'm not going to guess it off the top of my head. Um, 28th, thank you very much. Um, and it's going to be a blast. We're going to put everything we have into it uh, just to try and build relationships with our uh, friends in our, the rest of the ministry area um, and build those relationships up so we can actually work together more effectively. So come along. It, it, it's going to be a great time together. Um, put it in your diary. It doesn't matter if you don't dance. Just be there. Be there. Enjoy it. It's just going to be a laugh together. Um, so, yes, that's the important thing to note. And I think that's all I need to say today. Actually, one other thing I thought of. I was driving here today thinking to myself, we really need someone who could potentially download the video off the camera every Sunday and just upload it to YouTube. Now, there might be someone in the church who has that ability. It might not be. So I'm putting it out there. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I can do that quite easily, speak to me at the end. <laughs> it would be very much appreciated. It, I'm getting a lot, lot of requests for the sermons on Sunday, which we've had on Sunday. We're recording them. I'm managing to download them most weeks. It's just it takes time to process them. Not much time, but it does take time to process them and get them uploaded to YouTube. So if that's something you can do, do speak to me at the end. It'd be very much appreciated. Anything else? I haven't forgotten anything crucial? No big celebrations happening in the church this week, which I've forgotten about? No? Okay. Wonderful. Well, then, we are here today in the presence of a living God. And so before we go any further, let's just have a moment of quiet to prepare our hearts before him. Lord, as we come to meet with you now this morning, Lord, I pray that you will be at work among us. Send your Holy Spirit to move in this place. Minister to each of us. Let us encounter you. And as we go out from this place today, Lord, I pray that we will be changed in some way by what we have heard in your word by the prayers we've made, by the preaching, through the worship, 
through our sharing together as we enjoy fellowship with one another. So Lord, be with us this morning and be at work in this place. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so with the notices then, let's stand and worship our Lord together. Before you move on to the other slides, can we go back to that a second? To I think it was two verses ago. And please be seated for a moment. <laughs> uh, perhaps the one before? Perhaps the one before that? Nope. There we go. In his hands, he gently bears us. What a beautiful image that is. Sometimes we have an image of God in our heads of being, just being harsh sometimes, being uncaring, being just this powerful guy up there who who just does stuff in our lives here and there, but, but in his hands he gently bears us. Our God is a tender, loving God. He is gentle and he is kind. That is who our God is. He knows our feeble frames. He knows that we are fallen. He knows that we are broken. He knows that we fail to live faithfully as his people. And he loves us. And he gave his son to die for us. Such a wonderful gift. And so he calls us to live for him. That our lives live for him 
means constantly coming back to him time and time again because we do wonder, we stray, we fail to live faithfully as his people. And so as we come each week, we come confessing our sins to him, not leading my absolution, just coming and trusting his forgiveness. And so in a few moments of quiet, let us call to mind our sins, those things we need to ask him to forgive, knowing that through Jesus they are forgiven. This is a true saying, to be completely accepted and believed. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And so let us confess together, saying, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And one of the privileges of being a people forgiven is that we can come to God with our prayers, with our needs, those things on our hearts and lay them at his feet, knowing that he is a good father who cares for us and knows how to give his people good gifts. And so we're going to have our time of intercession together now. Lynn, wonderful. As Marion said a couple of weeks ago, when you start to pray, there are so many things we don't know where to start. However, today I would like to pray for all the people affected by the forest fires, for those who have lost their lives, family members, and for all who have lost homes and communities. Lord, in the storms of life, bid us come to you, that we, who are aware of our weaknesses, may be made strong through the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, when we don't have faith like Peter, when we went to walk, when he went to walk to Jesus on the water, increase our faith. When troubles beset us, let us hear you say, take heart, do not be afraid. Go with us as we go out to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for areas where the church is struggling or being overwhelmed. We pray for all evangelists and pastors who are overworked and in danger. Let us think of all those who proclaim your message in Merthyr Tidville. We pray for all those who reach out in faith towards you. Lord, in your mercy. We long for a time when the kingdoms of the world become your kingdom. We pray that the peace you offer may be accepted by rulers and leaders, that all in authority may rule with gentleness but firmness. We pray for all who are not at peace with themselves or others. We remember all who feel neglected, forsaken in our world. We pray for the world poor, for all in bad housing, for all who live in squalor, for all who feel the days are dark and the going is rough. We lift them up to you. Lord, in your mercy. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ loved to bring health and healing to those who were ill, may the Holy Spirit help and teach doctors and all those involved in caring to find out more so they can better do their work. We pray for the scientists who work to find new treatments and cures. 
and we pray for all those who are sick, remembering now those known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all those who mourn, that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love. And we remember Sue, Ken, and all their family at this time. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, to and the Holy Spirit, be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And we know God's heard us, so let's sing our worship to him. Death could not hold you, 
the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. His really is the name above all names. Let's sit at his feet and learn from him this morning. And we're going to hear from his word. Who's bringing us our reading? Go on, thank you. The reading this morning is taken from Genesis, chapter 37, and it's about Joseph and his brothers. Jacob continued to live in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived, and this is the story of Jacob's family. Joseph, a young man of 17, took care of the sheep and goats with his brothers, who were the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's concubines. He brought bad reports to his father about what his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other sons because he'd been born to him when he was old. He made him a long robe with full decorated sleeves. When his brothers saw that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them, they hated their brother so much they would not speak to him in a friendly manner. Well, one night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more. He said, listen to the dream I had. We were all in the field, tying up sheaves of wheat, when my wheat got up and stood up straight. You was formed a circle around mine and bowed down to it. Do you think you were going to be a king and rule over us then, his brothers asked. So they hated him even more because of his dreams and because he had told them about it. Then Joseph had another dream and said to his brothers, I had another dream in which I saw the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bowing down to me. He also told the dream to his father. And his father said, Do you think your mother and your brothers and I are going to come down and bow to you? Joseph's brothers were very jealous of this, but his father kept thinking about the whole matter for a long time. And now we go on to where Joseph is sold and taken into Egypt. One day, when Joseph's brothers had gone to Shechem to take care of their father's flock, Jacob said to Joseph, I want you to go to Shechem when your brothers are taking care of the flock. Joseph answered, Oh, I'm ready. His father said, Go and see if your brothers are safe, and if the flock is all right, then come back and tell me. So his father sent him on his way from the valley of Hebron. Joseph arrived at Chechem and was wandering about in the country when a man saw him looking around and said, What are you looking for? I am looking for my brothers who are taking care of their flock, he said. Can you tell me where they are? The man said, They have already left. I heard them say they were going to Doath. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Doath. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they decided and they plotted against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw his body into one of the dry wells. We can say that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what becomes of his dreams. 
Reuben and other brother heard them and tried to save Joseph. Oh, let's not kill him, he said. Just throw him into the well in the wilderness, but don't hurt him. He said this, planning to save Joseph from them and to send him back to his father. When Joseph came up to his brothers, they ripped off his long robe with the full decorated sleeves. They took him and threw him into the well, which was dry. While they were eating, they suddenly saw a group of Ishmaelites travelling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were loaded with spices and resins. Judah said to one of his brothers, Now what will be gained by murdering our brother and trying to cover up his murder? Let's tell him to these Ishmaelites, then we won't have to hurt him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And blood. His brothers agreed, and when some Midianite traders came by, the brothers pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, who then took him into Egypt. And that's God's precious words. Thank you. Thanks be to God. John, would you like to come and join me? So I've got the cables. Yes. <laughs> Can I pray for you? Yes, please. Lord, I thank you for John. I thank you for the hearts you've given him for his faithfulness towards you and the love you've poured into his heart. Lord, I pray that you'll be with him now, as you always are, uh, guiding him as he preaches your word to us. Lord, I pray that you'll be guiding his every word and you'll make him obedient to you. And Lord, for those of us who listen and are blessed by his words, Lord, I pray that, that you will be at work in us, moving in us uh, to to challenge us by what we hear. And we pray this in that beautiful, wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning, all. Uh, it's good to be sharing with you again. And um, I don't know about you do, you, do you dream much? Do you dream much? Apparently, everybody dreams, uh, but most of us don't remember the dream. <laughs> um, Sometimes they're very vivid, sometimes they're really unusual and you can't make out one thing from another. Have you experienced that? It can be like that. Well, um, today from our reading from uh, Genesis, uh, we hear about Joseph and his dreams. I want to bring to you uh, today, and of course it led to uh, Joseph going through some seriously difficult times, uh, but I want to bring to you also uh, a gospel reading which uh, was earmarked in the, um, on the overhead earlier on uh, where Jesus walked on water. So this is the gospel reading for today. You don't have to stand. We'll, uh, we'll just have the reading. Um, so Jesus walking on water. This is from Matthew 14 and uh, verses 22 uh, to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. This was just after they'd fed 5,000 men together with women and children. So how many all together was probably over 10,000. Well, he dismissed the crowd and after he dismissed them, he went up to, on the mountainside by himself to pray. After, later that night, he was there alone, and, at the f and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake, and when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. 
Jesus then reached out his hand. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is always available to us. Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat, the disciples, worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. That's the end of the reading. We praise God for his word to us this morning. Well, Peter found himself in difficulties. Joseph found himself in all sorts of difficulties on account of, in the beginning, his dreams that we heard about. Um, when I was looking at this week's readings and thinking on that, I was reminded about um, Martin Luther King's uh, speech it's actually 60 years ago this month that he gave that address, which I think many of us remember as, I had a dream, I have a dream. Well, <laughs> it was at the Lincoln Memorial in uh, Washington, D.C. at a civil rights march, and uh, it was estimated there was a quarter of a million people attended that address. Well, we haven't got quite that many here today, but uh, nevertheless, as um, Martin Luther the King spoke, he actually spoke what turned out to be an iconic speech. Some think that it was probably the best speech of the 20th century. Uh, and he spoke out prophetically, embracing the word of God and encompassing not only God's word, but all that was to be said about freedom, justice, and equality. And many of us remember it. Who, uh, do you remember? Uh, some of you may be just old enough to remember it. I was 18 at the time, never been kissed, you know, just a, a young man starting out in life. And uh, here we were, confronted, as it were, challenged, by this speech at this civil rights march. Well, it turned out that um, Martin Luther King hadn't actually got his sermon address prepared um, quite as well as he'd hoped. And Mahalia Jackson, uh, a well-known gospel singer at the time, who one, one of her songs was Precious Lord, take me by the hand, which is quite interesting given what uh, Mark said earlier about a Lord who takes us by hand from that first uh, hymn and also the picture that uh, Steve put up at the beginning of the service. Uh, Precious Lord, take me by hand. I'll come back perhaps to that a little bit later, but as Martin Luther King began his talk, uh, Mahalia Jackson, who was used to speaking on singing before uh, congregations and crowds, could see that the congregation wasn't really engaging with him as perhaps he'd hoped. And she called out from the side to say, Martin, tell him about the dream. And of course that led him into this prophetic speech which took hold not only of America, but touched the hearts probably of all who heard it. And uh, I, I listened to a few minutes of it the other day, having thought about it as I read the reading. Um, I, and in six minutes, he used the phrase, I have a dream, nine times. Uh, if you have a godly dream, it's important to tell it, as Mahalia Jackson said to him at the time. Well, with that, that in mind, let me return to the reading from Genesis. Uh, and whilst the dreams that Joseph had were prophetic, given his family circumstance, and given the background, and given the favoritism and the like, 
when he told his brothers, their reaction was one filled with hatred. They eventually had plans to kill him, and that was amended by the circumstances of what had happened. And uh, these Ishmaelites came along, and as a consequence, the brothers sold him into slavery. So through the hatred, through the slavery, and then eventually, if you remember the story, uh, he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. He was falsely then imprisoned. He met with people who also were in prison, who had dreams and which he interpreted. Some were challenging and some were more than challenging because they led to someone's death. And others were very comforting. And so God's word and God's dreams and the way he uses dreams and visions actually can speak into our lives, not just prophetically, but also for the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Well, eventually, after all of this, and because of the way that he'd interpreted dreams for the baker and the king's cupbearer, he eventually rose to a position of power and authority. And that gave rise to the fulfillment of the dream that he'd had and which he'd shared with his brothers. Ultimately, of course, it led to a reconciliation with his family because of the way we, we, in which with wisdom which perhaps he didn't have at 17, but with wisdom, he actually ministered into the uh, fruitful and lean years that, were, uh, that, that happened in Egypt. Well, when he eventually, his brothers came to get food in the midst of a famine, eventually he told them who he was. They were amazed because they never imagined that he would survive that time. But um, they were amazed and in a spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation, he said to his brothers, you meant what you did for harm, but God meant it for good. Wow. He broke down in tears himself at the time. It touches our hearts to think of that, given all that he'd gone through. And that brings me to the gospel reading in Matthew 14, where we hear, following the death of John the Baptist, the feeding of the 5,000 men together with the women and children, immediately after that, Jesus commands his disciples to take a boat to the other side of the lake, to the opposite side, and he dismisses the crowd and steps aside for a time of prayer, just to communicate with his father, catch up. But as he does so, we hear that the boat is on the water, on the lake, struggling, buffeted by winds, and Jesus is overlooking the lake, so he's always got them in sight, really. Jesus sees them and sees the predicament that they're in. And so, in a supernatural way, he goes out to meet them walking on the water. And this was shortly before dawn, so they'd They'd been out all night. They'd made some progress, but they were still struggling. And Jesus goes out to meet them in the position that they're in. And the disciples, presumably, having toiled all night, were probably extremely tired. And seeing Jesus approach on the water, they were wondering what sort of situation this was. Is it a dream? Were they holding themselves together? Was it a vision? What, what were they seeing? And they cried out in fear and even said, it seems like a ghost. Jesus' response was immediate and to restore calm, 
cried out, take courage, it's me, it's I, don't be afraid. And Peter, who is often one to be rather spontaneous <clears throat> and sometimes managed to put his foot straight into his mouth sometimes, bless him, he, um, he turned around and he declared, he says, Jesus, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And that's a very interesting word. Jesus says, come. Jesus says, come to me. He says, come to you. He says, come to each one of us. And Peter, one has to say, obediently, despite the circumstances, and perhaps even because of them, actually stepped out of the boat and started to walk towards Jesus. And perhaps it was just then that he realized exactly the position he was in. He was walking on water. And he must have thought, I can't really do this. And when he saw the wind and the waves and all that was going on around him, he realized what position he was in and started to sink. And because he started to sink and realized where he was, he shouted to Jesus, Lord, save me. It's another cry we could all use, isn't it? Lord, save me. Every circumstance and situation we find ourselves in, some difficult, some joyful, it's great to be able to say, come Lord Jesus, and Jesus, save me. Immediately, and this is where I come back to Mahalia Jackson's precious Lord, take me by hand, Jesus reached out, we're told in the reading, reached out with his hand and caught him. There was no need to doubt, he said to Peter and the others. And when they got back into the boat, after he'd drawn him out of the situation he was in, they worshipped him together. And what a beautiful name we sang earlier in our worship. What a beautiful name they must have thought at that point, given the circumstance that they'd found themselves in, and when he got back to the boat, the disciples worshipped him, declaring, truly, you are the Son of God. Is that something, I pray, we can all say today? Truly, this Jesus, name above all names, truly is the Son of God. Our response to his call to come, our response to needing his hand to save us, our response to worship in him, I pray, will be to note that truly he is the Son of God. Now, dreams and visions from God are important and significant throughout the scriptures. They're not common, they are occasional, but they are significant, they are prophetic, important sometimes as I said before they can be challenging but also can be comforting and whether we have dreamed godly dreams whether we've seen godly visions or not God can and does speak to us through his word and by his spirit in these days and if you do hear as it were a word from God then it will be encouraging to bring it to the church as a whole to be encouraged and built up, edified by it. Perhaps not in the circumstances that uh, Joseph found himself, where there was favoritism and all the uh, problems that he faced in his family situation, but actually that we can bring that so that the whole church can be built up and edified. So whether today we're going through difficult circumstances. We're reminded, aren't we, that as Jesus was on the hillside, he could see the disciples in their predicament. And as he sees where we are, he's ready 
to reach out his hand to you, to me, and even as he did to Peter in the midst of his doubts and his need, he takes us by the hand. And as the words of Mahalia's song said, Precious Lord, take me by my hand. And the chorus of that song says this, Precious Lord, take me, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, and I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me on. I pray that you'll know your hand is in the hands of God, in the hand of Jesus, and whatever your circumstances today, that you will know that Jesus will take you by hand and lead you on. And we thank God in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. May God go with you. And if you have a dream to share at some time or a vision, then please let Mark know and perhaps we can hear what it can do to bring edification and an upbuilding of the church and the growth of it. Amen? Amen. May God go with you. Thank you. Bless you. Always blessed to have you preach. Well, we're going to sing our offertory hymn in a few moments' time uh, before we enter into communion. Um, but it is a reminder to you all that if any of you need prayer today, perhaps you're, you feel like you're drowning at the moment and you're reaching out your hand and you're like, Jesus, where are you? Or perhaps you need just to be prayed for. You'll be aware of God ministering to you at this time. Whatever you need prayer for, the prayer ministry will be available to you. Just head over to the transept and they will meet you there when the communion's being dished out. But before we sing our offertory hymn, let us stand and share the peace together. And just remember. Yes. No, thank you. And so may the Father of many resting places grant you rest. The Christ who stilled the storm grant you calm. The Spirit who fills all things grant you peace. God's light be your light. God's love be your love. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Let's share each other a sign of peace. And we just shake each other's hands and move around if you want to uh, for this.
sleep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a right his treasure. How great the pain of searing loves. The father turns his face away as wounds which mother jewels and one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders, ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there, until it was a has brought me life, and I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom. In Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. What should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. We were going to use the Kenyan uh, service for communion this morning, but I got a sense God is saying to use this one, the ch standard Church in Wales one today. So we're going to do that. And so we celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine, to follow Christ's example and obey his commands. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who, bearing the human likeness, humbled himself and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. He was lifted up from the earth that he might draw all people to himself. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. And so hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through him accept our sacrifice of praise 
and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. No, we, are <laughs> we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Every time we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so as we receive communion together this morning, the invitation to come is to anyone who knows and loves the Lord Jesus for themselves. So come as you are. I'm going to invite uh, David and those leading the prayer ministry to come up first. And there is a reminder, if you'd like prayer ministry, please do head over to the transept. It doesn't have to be on subject to what we've been talking about today. If you need prayer for anything, head over there. They'd be honoured to pray for you. Thank you. And so let's stand and sing our next hymn together. It's a 
receive prayer and you wanted to receive prayer I'm sure they'll be happy to stick around or if you just head over that way anyway others will come and pray for you so if you do want prayer ministry do go and receive it still and so the Lord be with you may the Lord bless you and keep watch over you may the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you the love Sorry, may the Lord look lovingly on you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. And so as you go out today, know that the Lord's hand is there, ready to take yours in his hands. And so go trusting in him. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.